So, my name is Derek Kennedy, I'm business owner of 9D Diagnostics and we're based in Cherry Orchard in Dublin. Um, just a little bit about the services that we do. We do vehicle services, so whether it's an interest service or a full service you need, um, brake pads and disc replacement, clutch replacement, time and belts and chains, fault code diagnostics and NCT repairs. Just a little bit of history about myself. I started my apprenticeship um, back in 1998 in EP Mooney. Um, I spent four and a half years there. Um, and then when I was fully qualified, I then moved um, over to Donahue's Motor Group as a Fiat technician. And then from there, I went into Hutton and Mead as a senior uh, Fiat technician. In 2007, I completely changed direction. And I got a job in the aviation industry working for Lufthansa Technique. Um, we overhauled jet engines there. So we overhauled jet engines that were on the Boeing 737, 747, and the A321. Um, that's me there in front of a an engine that's on the Boeing 737, it was just run, hence why the hair is gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was the main engine that I worked on, is the Pratt & Whitney JT9D. Um, we tried to take over, bring some of the inputs we, we done in the aviation industry into, into air garage. It's, it's very well regulated, um, and the protocols are, are quite high. Um, anyone that's been in my workshop will see it's quite clean, and um, we try and bring that over from the aviation industry. Sadly, in 2014, uh, Lufthansa was closed and over 400 employees were made redundant. Um, so I decided to go back into the motor trade. But when I started in Lufthansa, there were no smartphones. And technology moves rapidly, especially in the motor trade. So I embarked on the a diagnostic technician program uh, run by Bosch. They don't just do washing machines. Um, they do an awful lot more than that. This course is 12 modules. Each module is uh, two days. And after the two days, you do an exam with a 70% pass rate. After you've completed all the 12 modules, um, you're then assessed on all the modules. It's a two-day trip, it's a two-day assessment where they put live bolts into cars and you have 40 minutes to find out what the problem is, what the solution is, and then write a report. I've completed this um, and I'm one of roughly 40 um, mechanics in Ireland who has this qualification. Um, we opened our workshop in Cherry Orchard in 2015. Um, and that's mainly where we do most of our work. We also have a van on the road, and we offer a free collection and delivery service. So if you're stuck for time, and um, we can come to you, we can come to your job um, or your home, collect your car, bring it back to our workshop, and then do whatever work needs to be done, and have it back to you then by the end of the business day. Um, that's my little apprentice. He comes in from time to time to make sure that his dad is actually doing work and keeping the workshop clean. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about a scenario that some people may have come across or you know someone that it's happened to. I'm going to use Joe as the example. So Joe's car, he gets an ABS light on his dash and he leaves it into his local garage. So the first thing that they do is they plug in their fault code reader, something like this, and they go into ABS, read the fault code. The fault code that they get is rear ABS wheel speed sensor, electrical malfunction in circuit. So they ring Joe and they say, Joe, you need a new ABS sensor. This is the ABS sensor here. Joe says, fine, gives them the go ahead. They replace the ABS sensor. Day or two later, after Joe's driving his car, he gets his light back on the dash. He's not happy. So he brings it back to the garage, and again, they plug in their diagnostic equipment, they read the fault code. It's the exact same fault code again. So they replace the sensor. Where did they go from here? So they go down to the ABS control unit. This is the ABS control unit here. It's big, it's bulky, and it's expensive. Um, they tell Joe he needs this um, control unit, so he gives them the go-ahead. He says, look, I'm in court all day next week. I need the car sorted and I need it up and running. So they replace it, the car goes back to Joe and he's driving. On his way into court the next day, bing, 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 he gets the lights on the dash. He's telling him everything bar eject. So now what happens? <laughs> what does he do? His components have been replaced. So now we're going to look at what happens when it comes into us. So we used Bosch KTS 570. This is up there with the main dealers. It's a very, very good um, diagnostic equipment, but it's only a tool. We use this as a tool to help us diagnose the problem. So we didn't ask Joe a lot of questions. Some questions he can answer, some he can't. When the light came on? Was it on the minute he started the car? Was he driving? When it came on, was it raining? Lots of different questions. It helps us diagnose the problem. Then we're gonna do a full diagnostic scan of all the systems on the car, not just the ABS, everything. But we want to look at all the fault codes because they can be relevant. But in this case, the ABS uh, fault code is the one we want to look at. 
So we're going to go straight into the ABS and have a look. We have wheel speed sensor, rear right, electrical fault inserting, similar fault. So from here, I'm going to test drive the car. We're going to look at it under live data. In live data, we're looking at the two rear wheels. In blue is the passenger wheel. It's coming up to around 22 kilometers. It's operating um, where it should be. The red line down the bottom is no signal. That's the one with the problem with the sensor. So from here, I want to test that sensor. I want to see if the sensor is actually working. So as you see here, we go in with the, with the actual probes into the back. And I'm checking for a live and earth um, com coming out of that sensor. I have 11.42 volts, battery voltage, what I want to be seeing. Now I want to have a look at the signal that comes out of that back to the computer. It's called an oscilloscope reading, it's like a heart rate monitor. So we go in and we, we scan that. This video on the left hand side is the wheel being spun and on the right hand side here is the signal that we're going to see. So this is just interference and then this, this is the signal that we want to see. It's the magnetic field opening and closing, opening and closing. That's exactly what I want to see so I know that that sensor is working correctly. So from here I get my word driver on now and I'll check the wire running up to the ABS control unit, which is pin 43. This is the ABS control unit, that's the wire. Again, we're back probing in, and we're spinning the wheel again. When we spin the wheel, we're looking for that same signal. I'm not getting it, it's flat on. There's no signal there. So I now know that the problem isn't in the, isn't in the sensor, and it's not in the ABS control unit, it's in the wire. So from this point now, I'm now ringing Joe, and I'm saying, Joe, the problem is in the wire. There's two options to it. We can go and we can find where the brake is, or we can just replace that whole section of the work. We do it up to the manufacturer's specification, and there's no issues. Joe gets his car back, no lights on the dash, and he's happy. Garage one, the car is in and out of that workshop over a three week period after trying to diagnose the problem. They replaced the sensor, they replaced the ABS control unit. That money isn't coming back to anybody. They're not giving you that money back. Joe will probably get it back. Most of us <laughs> probably won't. <laughs> when it's in with us, we, our protocols are a lot quicker, so we can get to the root cause of the problem a lot quicker, which saves you time, money, and hassle. So why does this scenario happen? It happens quite simply because the skill levels aren't up to where they should be. There's lots of guys out there who say they're mechanics. They've never served their apprenticeship. But they are working on cars. They're fitting brake pads, they're doing stuff like what we've seen here, and that's why these situations happen. I've never been asked for my trade papers. I have them, but I've never been asked. And that's out there. There's no regulation at all in Ireland over the, the, um, the industry. This is something that we see just here, a little split in the pin. That's something that we see all the time. And people will, will replace components instead of fixing that. And they get the same issue coming back in. So how are we different? The price we quote is the price you pay. We've no hidden extras. So when we quote you on a job, that's the price you're going to pay when the car is dropped back to you. We don't cut corners to acquire prices, so we only use top quality parts and oil. We don't use any cheap stuff because it, it, it keeps your car longer on the road if we're using top quality parts. No time, no problem. We'll come to you. As I said, if you're stuck for time, we can come to your home or your workplace and take the car away to our workshop and do whatever work needs to be done. Um, we're a family run business and that's my wife on the left, most of you have met her and that's my son on the right hand side who likes to come in and make sure that I'm actually walking um, and that's, um, that concludes the presentation. <laughs>
a lot of issues with them. But yeah, it's up there with the main dinners. I just say, I said it was testimony last week, but Citron Berlingo, two services with Citron, and they couldn't fix a reverse sensor. And there I had it on one service and it was fixed. Well, see, my guys, I was over to play it, so I'm used to fixing them, you know? <laughs> <laughs>